friends, full disclosure for today's video. If you somehow miss the thumbnail and the large myriad pods that were on it, I want to let you all know now that there is no clickbait here. You are about to see two extremely large centipedes. If that is not for you, please feel free to exit the video now, click backspace, whatever you need to do. Choose one of the recommendations for another video because we are about to start looking at some really, really cool, but also very large centipedes. And I completely understand that that might trigger phobia or creepy crawly fear response for some of you. Um, but yeah, alas, you have been warned. So here we go. Without further ado, today's video, guys, is about my beloved two Scolopendra gigantea white leg, which are otherwise known as the Peruvian giant white leg centipedes. These are arguably some of the world's largest centipedes, and I own two of them. So yeah, let's do this. All right, friends, so these are my Scolopendra gigantea white legs. So these are two very large centipedes, and these are their enclosures. You'll notice right away that I have these <laughs> strange mechanisms of holding down the lid. So I now have another idea that I think will work better than this. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of it in the first place. Basically, I'll do a tutorial on it. It works for teas as well, but just drilling a hole in each corner, putting a screw through and screwing on a nut uh, just to hold them in place. It's uh, a lot more tedious to get them off, but more effective. This is very tight and the animals really do have a hard time pushing or lifting the lids up if they can even reach the top, but it's been working for the last five or so months that I've owned the animals. So you'll see those and that's what they are. Basically they're hair elastics between the hooks and they hold the lids on to prevent the escapes because centipedes are uh, prehistoric animals that have lived on our planet for upwards of 450 million years. Some of the oldest fossil records for land animals of any kind are myriapods in their family. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the smaller of the two, in fact. This is the enclosure. You'll see right away that it's a nice, loose, aerated soil mix. We have different types of bark, um, pumice, if you will, leaf litter, a little bit of cocoa husk and peat with organic black earth, and the centipede is resting right here. So there is the animal. Now as soon as we gently nudge them, you'll notice that they will start moving. Now I'm gently going to prod the animal with a paintbrush so we can get a little bit of movement out of them so you can see how it is they locomote. Hey there. There you go. Oh sure, just get your water dirty, thanks a lot. And so yeah, just tall enough that they really can't get there. At least not easily. Now as far as housing goes, I keep my guys in their large bins. They have cross ventilation and ventilation on the lids as well. They have a large wood hide, a large piece of bark that they can burrow under and feel secure. And then they have a shallow ceramic glazed water dish that always has fresh water for them. Yeah, sometimes they put dirt in it, but I try to keep it clean as often as possible. Now, a really important thing with these animals is not to keep them overly moist. Depending on the species, fine, but these guys do need to have a bit of a dry area. If you keep them too moist, it can lead to bacterial infections and issues with ventilation that can lead to them losing some of their legs or ultimately getting bacterial infections that can rot away parts of their body and possibly kill them. So despite what some other folks do, I actually like to keep my guys a bit above room temperature. They are always in at least, let's say 78 to um, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but I don't give them like a heat pad or something like that to keep them extra warm. And their substrate is always sort of evenly moist, but one area is always on the drier side. So once in a while, I'll overflow their water dish, maybe give a little bit of a spray down to make sure things are evenly moist. But other than that, like the lack of ventilation combined with the amount of ventilation there actually is kind of makes it that I don't have to add much water to these enclosures ever. As far as feeding goes, these animals are voracious. Uh, they're not as bad as some other members of the same Scolopendra genus but they pretty much accept almost anything you want to feed them. But my animals are doing just fine eating insects. Crickets, superworms, they're happy to be eating those. Hornworms would be good too. Now, another thing is you don't want to overfeed your animals. My guys eat about two times a week or so, um, if that, and I feed them modestly. I don't let them get too fat. Uh, my larger animal, which I suspect may be female, is pretty plump. But again, they haven't eaten in a while, so I thought, why don't we also make this a bit of a feeding video? So we're gonna go ahead and feed the animals, and you're gonna have a chance to get some cool footage and see the animals eating. Now, before we do that, I thought it might be fun for us to try and measure the animals and see how large they actually are. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, guys, so we need to try and get this lovely creature to move a little bit for us and sort of spread out. Hello oh, friend, you're okay. You're okay. There we go. Out comes the tape measure. Now if you can see that, we're looking at a pretty large centipede. This animal is upwards of 10 inches in length if not longer. There's no exaggeration there. It's Oh sure, just walk over it. Excuse me, where do you think you're going? Okay, bye. You can see that this animal is currently grooming a little bit. All right guys, so let's go ahead and feed them. I'm gonna give him a super arm and see if they're hungry. Now, School panda dahani and other species like I was saying are pretty aggressive. These guys are like usually chill enough that you can literally hand feed them. Or tong feed them like that. There we go. There you go buddy. Alright, I'm gonna zoom in here and try and get you some better close up footage of how they eat. Now this is a little risky and I don't exactly encourage it, but because my animal's busy eating, I just want to show you how big it is there. Large animal. So I actually do suspect that that animal we just fed is male. Um, most centipedes are extremely hard to sex, but the Scolopendra gigantea is sort of sexually dimorphic by the very last segment of the body, but We'll see. I'm not sure that I'm set on even trying to breed them yet. I'm just really enjoying them as pets as is, so let's go ahead and feed the second animal now and have a look at its enclosure and see it as well. Alright, so here's the second animal. It's actually a lot larger than the first one. And as you can see, she, I believe, has made a large uh, burrow kind of area with her piece of wood and threw a lot of soil over top of it. So it's kind of a neat little area she has that she hides away in. But my thing that I notice is every time they're hungry, they always come out into the open. So first thing we'll do is let's try and measure her. Gently nudge her. See how she reacts. 
Sorry, girl. It's gonna be okay. Girl. What might work well for us is actually feeding her, because then she'll be still and give us the chance to line up the tape measure. So how about for this one, we give it a large female cricket. You guys will need to pay fast attention. Here we go. Boom. She got it. It's going for a closer look. Excuse me, madame, where are you going? Where are you going? Huh? Can we have a good look at you eating, please? There we go. How's that for a view? Well, I hope she's not gonna miss that on the ground. Can I pick that back up? Now, these animals can be scavengers as well, so they will eat prey that isn't alive. As you can see, she just picked that abdomen back up and she's munching away on it now. Whereas if you were to compare this myriapod to something like a mantis, there's a joke that mantids are picky eaters and if they drop food, they will not pick it up and eat it again, which is completely accurate. If that were a mantis that dropped that uh, abdomen, they would not have picked it back up to keep eating it. Whereas a centipede, most certainly, does not let its prey go to waste. You can see there the abdomen of the cricket was full of um, eggs, and that is what she's picking up and finishing off there. And now what I'm going to do is hand her another cricket, right when she's about done. And again, they're pretty calm-tempered for a centipede, so we'll let her finish that one, and then we'll gently give her a second. It's almost done. She might start grooming a little bit. Ready for another one? <laughs> there you go. Alright guys, while she's munching away on that cricket, I managed to get her pretty well sprawled out to give us the opportunity to try and measure her. As you can see, she still isn't quite straight, but you can see that this animal is an easy 8 to 9 inches in body length, probably 9 almost, um, and still has some decent growing to do. These animals can get upwards of 12, so that is a beautiful, impressive beast. Now, it might seem kind of strange, but one of the main reasons I was inspired to own a few of these animals was that I actually feared them a little bit. And also because I felt that with the audience that I have, it was an opportunity to sort of debunk and shine them in a positive, non-frightening light, you know, educational and fascinating and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, respectful light to sort of see a way to appreciate this type of animal because they're always regarded as disgusting, creepy, crawly, terrifying, dangerous. Yes, you need to respect this type of animal. It is venomous. This particular species isn't said to be very dangerous in terms of toxicity. Uh, however, people react differently to these types of things. Uh, but 
the main thing is that I really wanted to use my platform to shine these animals in a positive light to make people appreciate millions of years of evolution and find a sense of beauty in the animal as opposed to fear. So I really hope that through the content you just saw, you were able to maybe, maybe see that. And I've grown to really love the animals. I will say I've kept a few different species of myriapod or centipede in my life. And some of them are kind of scary because they move very quickly and they can be more dangerous. But I really like these ones because despite their size, they have a bit more of a calm composure. They're a lot less like evil slinky flip around, try and bite the tongs attack kind of mode. As you saw, I can literally tongue feed these animals comfortably. I still respect them immensely and never let my guard down around them. And I treat them carefully. Uh, I know how to move them out of the enclosure when I need to do maintenance. I have a mechanism that I use to slide them into it and lock but they are really cool animals and I hope that you've grown a sense of appreciation for them. If there's anything you'd like to learn about them more that I haven't shown in this video, please comment down below. Let me know if you enjoy this content. Do you want to see more of them in the future? I'd be happy to hear that and I'd be happy to show you more of these animals. So without further ado, that's going to be the end of my video. I really hope you enjoyed seeing my two very, very large pets here. Yeah. If you like this video feel free to subscribe down below ding the notification bell to know when the next video is coming out and i look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon and don't forget to give as many thumbs up as there are feet on these things would you ever own a pet centipede let me know in the comment section down below type away let me know all right mister you want a cricket come here oh look at him you see that his tail end grabbed it and the whole body swung around incredible Millions of years of perfection and evolution right there. What an amazing creature.